I'm going to explain how I made Soldier 76's gun from Overwatch. Let me just start this off by saying this is the first gun I've ever made. And there were a couple of things that were new to me. Uh, one of those things being that I was gonna be traveling with this prop. So this prop actually comes apart. The way I started this was I actually purchased Cam Wee's, I think it's called Guns and Rifle Cosplay Book. And you can just click right here. Um, that is a really good place to start if you haven't made a gun before. And that's just what I did. The first thing I did was I printed out this gun. And luckily Blizzard has all of their Overwatch characters and the props for, a, for cosplay purposes in a PDF file. I printed out this gun and I had to bump the size up in, I just did it in paint, believe it or not. Just went to paint settings, changed the size to, I believe I started around 200% of its normal size. Uh, I did have to print it out multiple times before I got the correct size. What you have to do is you have to print it out and you'll actually have to tape all the pieces together, cut out the shape, put it in your hands, make sure it's a good uh, fit for yourself. And then after that, you wanna print out two of those copies in the same size. I made the mistake of not doing this. Do print out two in the same size. One, you're gonna cut up into a bunch of pieces that you're gonna use to cut out your foam. The other you're gonna use as a reference to look at, but also as a reference on where to actually place the pieces on the prop. Okay, so yeah. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna cut out all those pieces. <laughs> uh, it takes some time, don't lose the pieces, have a good place to put them. And what you need to think about is when you start cutting out the actual foam using those, those pages, what you need to remember is that when you cut it out, pieces are gonna stop in certain places, but this gun is three-dimensional and that pa paper is not. <laughs> so you have to think, okay, well, it end, this, like for instance, this back piece here on that paper, it ends, it ends here, you know, it cuts right here. It's a really thin piece here, but that's not what this piece is. This piece is actually a big chunk. It's actually this, sh this shape here. So when you cut out your actual EVA foam, make sure you take into account where the pieces actually will run underneath other pieces. Always give yourself extra EVA foam. If you need to cut it down when you're putting it together, you can always do that. Okay, so after cutting out pieces, and, and I kind of went back and forth, whatever you wanna do, you can cut out all the pieces, you can do a little bit and then start detailing, whatever works for you. What I did is I did the, the bulk of the gun and what's so important, and please do not skip this step, I used a Dremel. You have to bevel edges and you have to put in details in your, in your prop. So anything where you see here, like the finger grips, I guess, um, this stuff was just done with the Dremel as well. Any detailing like that. Um, and then these were all, almost everything has a beveled edge. If you don't do a beveled edge, it looks really almost cardboardy. So please just take the extra time and do it. You'll be amazed on what it'll look like if you, if you do that. Always try to plan ahead. Uh, I know we as cosplayers always try to do that and it doesn't really <laughs> work out sometimes. But one of the big things I had to think about with this prop was transporting it. Now because of that, this is just too long to fit in a suitcase. Uh, so I had to actually think about ways to make it come apart. So two things I did. I did cover this in Warbla. Uh, it gave it more durability and it just made me feel more comfortable with when traveling with it. So that was one thing. The second thing is I used really strong magnets to keep this together. So I'll actually show you how it comes apart. Um, first thing is the helix rocket cannon. It comes apart there. You can see my magnets are here. I put I actually broke them in half. And if you want to break these in half, all you have to do this is so silly. Um, just hold them as far as you part, apart as you can. Bring them closer together until they're at their max di distance where they connect. Then one will break. <laughs> um, so as you can see, these magnets actually go into these holes here. And then this one here. The other piece was here. And this was great because I also ran LEDs throughout the gun. This is a way to access my battery and all the wires throughout it. So more magnets, as you can see, here and here. And then this big chunk actually comes off. So um, this made it fit just perfectly 
in the suitcase. So make sure you test that out when you are printing out your, your gun. Yours might be bigger than mine since you might be a bigger person and you just need a bigger gun. So make sure it's gonna fit in a suitcase if you plan on doing it that way. But I had to use a lot of magnets here. I use one, two, three, four, five, six of them here. And you just match them up. And uh, it was really stable, actually. So that was good. Okay, so plan ahead before you end up putting anything uh, in a permanent position. Certain pieces uh, might look like they were really complex, but they weren't. Uh, one of those pieces I wanna talk about is this right here, this little like triangly detailed piece. The big thing about this is these are all beveled edges in here, but the way I did that is I actually did that on a separ separate thinner piece of EVA foam so that when I used the Dremel, it wouldn't eat into the piece underneath it. So after Dremeling this piece out, I just glued it on top and then I covered it in a warbler, which gave it that cool effect. So these pieces here, so this white one um, and then this like shoulder, the butt of the gun here, um, these were actually, so about, I believe they're four pieces of EVA foam. So we have two of the thicker ones and then uh, two thinner pieces on the outside. So these pieces actually fit in over the gun. They were snug. So the two pieces in the, in the center here, they're actually cut much shorter than this. So they, they cut more inward like this. So this piece could actually go on. It just gave it more strength, which I liked. Uh, this one here, this piece, that's just, I use black warbler, um, which seems to be a little bit smoother when you roll it out, but that was just rolled out warbler. Uh, and then I just kind of snaked that along there. The barrel of the gun. So the barrel of the gun itself is made out of PVC pipe. Now, again, just do it, a little bit of detailing, just dremel the edges, just makes it less like a straight cut there. Um, these pieces here were actually EVA foam again and Warbler. One thing I did know is when I, when I wrapped these around the PVC pipe, it created a big gap between this piece and this piece when you put them together. So I actually, after wrapping them around the PVC pipe, I did end up cutting away a little bit there. So it would be a little bit closer here. You can still see that there's space here, which is actually how Soldier's Gun is. I just didn't like the amount of space when I didn't cut away at that. So just a per personal preference, but you can do either. For the LEDs, I just cut away using a Dremel again here. I ended up using just a, it's clear cellophane. So you can get that pretty much anywhere at the dollar store. It's just anything you would wrap like those gift baskets in. Get the clear one, they'll look like it's silver when it's rolled up. But if you do enough layers, it actually spreads out the light a lot better. So you don't just have a blinding LED. And it's cool though, because when you actually look down the barrel, I don't know if I got the camera there, uh, it, you have the light there as well. So I cut out those holes. Um, this here is actually multiple sizes of PVC pipe. So it kind of created like steps. And then I covered that in paper clay. You can use any clay. I just use paper clay. It's what I had around the house. Uh, and then you sand it down. And then I, again, covered it in war blood just for a smoother finish. And it also has like these little extra layers. So again, that's why I use the war blood there too. My, my gun's just slightly different, especially up here. And that is because it comes apart. So I know it's, it's not exact, but uh, this is what I ended up doing for his ammo on the gun his ammo area is really detailed and it's really tiny. So what I ended up doing is I just got a little piece of plexiglass uh, just to cover up a piece of black EV, thin PV, EV, EVA foam. And all I did with that is I cut out these shapes on the side, but then with just a box cutter, I did very, you know, just straight um, parallel lines all the way down for each of the, the marks of the ammo. Then when you heat it up, they kind of separate just enough to give, to let that blue light through. So hopefully you can see that. These things, oh my gosh. Okay, um, these things were kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna lie, but totally worth it. Okay, so these again were just made out of the EVA foam. Now what I did is I hollowed out this thicker part here because I knew I was gonna put the, the light in there. And then again, I just used the cellophane to help diffuse the light. So, okay. There's, for different pictures, some of the pictures of the gun, I know at least on the PDF file for Soldier's Gun, these look, they're actually floating off of the gun, which is insane. Uh, but there's other ones if you actually look in game, I think you can actually see like a hook that holds them on. But regardless, the way I did mine, um, because I used EVA foam, 
I was able just to have a small amount of surface holding them together. So pretty much just this area here is holding that on, uh, obviously on both sides. And then I actually did reinforce that one, I, th I, th I believe, with glue. So, uh, but they're, they're actually, they kind of have that floating look, if you see. You could put stuff under there. And there's no wires, which is, the way I did that is I actually got a incredibly long drill bit. I believe it's for concrete. <laughs> and I ran it through, just make sure you go incredibly straight. You have to be straight. Go all the way through here. And then I threaded the wiring through here. So if you look really close, I don't know if you can get it on that camera. There's actually wiring right there. Okay, <laughs> there is wiring there, it's you, but you can hardly see it, which is great because when you are actually, you know, have your prop, you don't want them to see the wiring. So that's how I ended up doing those. Um, again, any of these detailing, we're done with, with the Dremel. So I, I highly recommend that all of these, um, there's a lot of details in this gun. In fact, I actually forgot some. Uh, somehow I skipped over them, but you know. <laughs> okay, other than that, oh, and then these pieces here, uh, I just used the, the two thicker pieces again, and then I had a thinner piece of EVA foam in between just to give it, because his gun looks like it actually comes apart. Like it's, it's two separate pieces right there. That's all I did for that. And then after that, it was just uh, paint. I did use wood glue. I used two layers of wood glue. You don't really have to on black warbler. It has a pretty smooth finish, but I wanted it to be just a little bit smoother than that. And then just the detailing. So I do recommend for the, the lettering here, make um, a little stencil because it is duplicated on the other side. And you don't want to have to do that twice. And then even with the numbers here, you can tell there's just detailing there. And then the wear. But yeah, overall, um, like I said, this is my first gun. And I was really prepared for something terrible to go to happen, and it didn't. Oh, actually, one more thing. So this is made the same way the barrel is. So again, a smaller, uh, this is a PVC pipe, and then a smaller PVC pipe right here, and then I did the paper clay. Now with this, if you look, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't actually have the light on in this one right now, but um, there's LEDs in here too. So this piece here is, it, I guess it's the rocket, the, the Helix rockets, but um, the way I did this, is the kind of the same way if you watch my Ray Staff tutorial. Um, there is, this actually comes out, let me show you. Okay. So, so there's the empty barrel. So there's LED lights here. I can plug it in for you. So that they're there. And what I did is this is just EVA foam, uh, multiple layers until I got the right size. Nothing, no warble around it, obviously, because you want it to be squishy because that's how I got it to squish into there. And so with the battery in, I just put the battery in first, push that down. And then the only, the only problem is to get it out, you do need something like a stick. <laughs> um, the only thing that I didn't plan for was this looked really great. It gave this perfect ring effect when this was white after spray painting it black you can actually see the three dots of the LEDs, which, so I'm gonna mess with, I'm gonna mess with that a little bit, but uh, this actual technique works out pretty well. So this cap here, so here's PVC pipe. PVC pipe runs from here to here. This is EVA foam to kind of squish it in there to hold it. And this on the top is warbler. And I just made that shape actually with, you know those kids like popper things, you flip inside out and they go like that. That's what that's made out of. And I think that's about it. That's how this was made. And like I said, if you go slow, if you give yourself enough time, I, I, didn't, I didn't come across that like terrible moment. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And if you give it a try, uh, good luck. And let me know how it goes because uh, Overwatch is awesome and I wanna see as many creations from it as possible. So <laughs> thank you.